It's time now to, to turn to uh, Professor Wang Jizi, uh, who participated in the session yesterday. So, Professor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas. I'm happy to join others, although I'm not able to join you physically. I hope I will be, uh, be with you in person in the future. Uh, you ask good questions, but I cannot give you a very good As some people have said, uh, China is rising it's strong materially. But in public perceptions of China around the world, the, uh, the picture is mixed. Many media reports indicate that public opinion polls in the Western countries, Japan, South Korea, and India, are increasingly unfavorable to China. Uh, recently, I heard that Mr. Kishida may be elected prime minister in Japan soon. Uh, it is related to what he and other Japanese see today's China. He was elected, but he was educated in America. He is pragmatic, but probably unsympathetic to China's political values. And I would like to know of my South Korean colleague how he will uh, assess the uh, upcoming election of South Korea and the next uh, president of South Korea may have another <coughs> approach to China. Last week, the leaders of the four nations that make up the informal grouping, the United States, Japan, India, and Australia, known as Quad met for the first time in person at the White House. Its unstated goal is to stop China from becoming Asia's undisputed hegemon. There have been other events and developments in recent months, not in favor of China. But they are hardly reported in China itself and hardly known to the general public in China. China's media is full of triumphalism, meaning we are winning, we are winning, and we are winning. We have friends all over the world praising our achievements. This self-image makes it difficult for Beijing to show any attitude toward whoever viewed as hostile to China. I don't see any prospects that Beijing would back down on major foreign policy issues and become less assertive, but as, at least in rhetoric. Our, uh, our French participant asked China to be humble, but I don't, like, I, I don't see the likelihood of being humble for China in the near future. China and the United States have been engaged in a protracted strategic competition that may last for decades. However, at this moment, both Beijing and Washington are preoccupied with their respective domestic imperatives. On the Chinese side, we have electric out outage in many provinces, especially in the Northwest, Northeast. The debt crisis regarding Evergrande is another example of China's weakness. The most damaging problem is the slowing down of economic growth. There are issues related to the increasing fertility rate and the aging population. It is difficult to achieve the goal of common prosperity when economic growth is slower, private-owned enterprises are depressed, 
and not doing well. And social safety net has not been remarkably improved. U.S. we see continued political polarization, the fighting back for the Democrats, the for the Republic uh, in Congress and in uh, infrastructure construction, uh, pandemic control, legal immigration, uh, gun control, to name is just a, say, uh, a few. So I envisage, envisage a temporary stay in the bilateral relationship between China and the United States. All this in the comes in the months ahead. I don't see urgent bilateral issues emerging. But I don't see this as improvement. There can be, for instance, the uh, resumption of, of consulates in Houston and Chengdu. There could also be economic dialogue at high levels between the two countries. However, three possible problems are lying ahead for China in the next few months. First, the continued U.S. effort to tr trace the origins of COVID-19 that worries China. Second, the Winter Olympic Games. The Western countries are not going to boycott the Games, but they are uh, the public opinion polls show that the, the, uh, these countries are, are not sympathetic and they may not be uh, wholeheartedly support the uh, games. And that could be uh, embarrassed time. <clears throat> Third, there is the talk about a democratic summit toward the end of the year. And that is, of course, not very favorably received in China. Especially China is concerned about Taiwan's participation in the summit. Maybe not uh, President Tsai Ing-wen or some top leaders, but even a, a lower level participation will annoy China. We have seen the insignification of China's propaganda war, both at home and internationally, against the United States. We see reports on racial tensions, gun control issues, bad management pandemic, human rights violations in the United States, and international failures like in Afghanistan. But the propaganda campaign is directed more at domestic audiences to enhance their confidence in the Communist Party, rather than at international audiences for them to have a better understanding or positive understanding of China. So I see China's international behavior as mostly defensive in nature. I don't buy the theory that China decides to buy to be the, the hegemon of the world or even of Asia. As I say in my recent articles, I think the Chinese-U.S. competition is um, basically a game between the domestic order maintained by the Communist Party of China and the international order maintained and advocated by the United States. So in the United States, you see America first as a slogan. But in China, my best or the slogan I always hear, Communist Party first. So I see a uh, U.S.-China trade volume increase last year and climate change, the effort on climate change is serious. I'm more worried about technological decoupling. Thomas mentioned the chips. That is a real issue in the U.S.-China relationship. And also there is a possible cyber war. I'm not much worried about confrontation, despite the increased militant uproars among some Chinese netizens and some commentators. Uh, we know that uh, 
chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff uh, last year made a phone call to his Chinese counterpart to uh, prevent a war between the two sides. And there will be improved crisis management arrangements between the two sides. I think the Taiwan policy of China is consistent. Uh, Xi Jinping made a, uh, a telegram to his counterpart, the uh, chairman of the Kuomintang in Taiwan, and he said and, uh, uh, Taiwan should uh, engage each other for a peaceful solution. Of course, China will upgrade its, its military preparedness. Oh, yes. uh, Cut could be air fighters and bombers and uh, flying over uh, tai Taiwan or near Taiwan, things like that. But I don't see a real war between the two sides. Professor, when we talk about Pro Professor, oh, yes. Professor Borzi, yes. I'm afraid I, I have to, to interrupt you. I will okay. be back. I will I be back to you just to last word. Uh, yes, last, just to to respect the last the, sentence the time constraint, but uh, as, uh, as Marcus Noland uh, insisted on the, uh, the domestic factors, I, I think also what you have said about the Chinese opinion is very uh, useful to, to, to fuel our, our, our debates. Okay.